So if we actually return back to poker and chess, are some of the ideas that you're learning here with diplomacy, could you construct AI systems that play like humans? Like um, make for a fun opponent in a game of chess? Yeah, absolutely. We've already started looking into this direction a bit. So we tried to use the techniques that we've developed for diplomacy uh, to make chess and Go AIs. And what we found is that it led to much more human-like strong chess and Go players. The way that AIs like Stockfish today play is in a very inhuman style. It's very strong, but it's very different from how humans play. And so we can take the techniques that we've developed for diplomacy. We do something similar in um, in chess and Go, and we end up with a bot that's both strong and human-like. Um, to, to elaborate on this a bit, like one way to approach making a human-like AI for chess is to collect a bunch of human games, like a bunch of human grandmaster games, and just to supervise learning on those games. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that if you do that, what you end up with is an AI that's substantially weaker than the human grandmasters that you've trained on. Because the neural net is not able to approximate the, the nuance of the strategy. It, it, this goes back to the planning thing that, that I mentioned, the search thing that I talked about before, that these human grandmasters, when they're playing, they're using search and they're using planning. And the neural net alone, unless you have a, a massive neural net that's like a thousand times bigger than what we have right now, um, it's not able to approximate those details very effectively. And on the other hand, you can leverage search and planning very heavily but then what you end up with is an AI that plays in a very different style from how humans play the game. Now, if you strike this intermediate balance by setting the, um, the regularization parameters correctly and say you can do planning, but try to keep it close to the human policy, then you end up with an AI that plays in both a very human-like style and a very strong uh, style. And you can actually even tune it to have a certain ELO rating. So you can say, play in the style of like a 2800 ELO human. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wonder if you could do specific type of humans or categories of humans, so, not, not just skill, but style. Yeah, I think so. And so this is this is where the, the research gets interesting. Like, you know, one of the things that I was thinking about is, and this is actually already being done, I think there's a researcher at the University of Toronto that's working on this, um, is to make an AI that plays in the style of a particular player. Like Magnus Carlsen, for example, you can make an AI that plays like Magnus Carlsen. And then where I think this gets interesting is like, hey, maybe you're up against Magnus Carlsen in the world championship or something. You can play against this Magnus Carlsen bot to prepare against the real Magnus Carlsen. And you can try to explore strategies that he might struggle with um, and try to figure out like, how do you beat this player in particular? Um, on the other hand, you can also have Magnus Carlsen working with this bot to try to figure out where he's weak um, and where he needs to improve his strategy. Um, and so I can envision this future where data on specific chess and Go players becomes extremely valuable because you can use that data to create specific models of how these particular players play. So increasingly human-like behavior in bots, however, um, I, as you've mentioned, makes cheating, cheat, cheat detection much harder. It, it does, yeah. The way that cheat detection works in a game like poker and a game like chess and go from what i understand is trying to see like is this person making moves that are very common among chess ais or you know ais in general um but very uncommon among top human players and if you have the development of these ais that play in a very strong style but also a very human like style then that poses serious challenges for cheat detection and it makes you now ask yourself a hard question about what is the role of AI systems as they become more and more integrated in our society. And this kind of human AI um, integration has has some deep ethical issues that we should be aware of. And also it's a kind of cybersecurity challenge, right? For to make, you know, w one of the assumptions we have when we play games is that there's a trust that it's only humans involved. And they're the better AI systems to create, which makes it super exciting, human-like AI systems with different styles of humans is really exciting, but then we have to have the defenses better and better and better if we're to trust that we uh, can enjoy human versus human game in a deeply fair way. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating, it's, a, it's just, uh, it's humbling. 
Yeah, I think there is a lot of like negative potential for this kind of technology, but you know, at the same time, there's a lot of upside for it as well. So, you know, for example, right now it's really hard to learn how to get better in games like chess and poker and Go because the way that the AI plays is so foreign and incomprehensible. Yes. Yeah. But if you have these AIs that are playing, you know, you can say like, oh, I'm a 2000 ELO human. How do I get to 2200? Now you can have an AI that plays in the style of a 2200 ELO human, and that will help you get better. Or, you know, you, you mentioned this problem of like, how do you know that you're actually playing with humans when you're playing like online in, in video games? Mm -hmm. Well, now we have the potential of populating these like virtual worlds with um, agents, like AI agents that are actually fun to play with. And you don't have to always be playing with other humans to, to you know, have a fun time. So yeah, a lot, a lot of upside potential too. And I think, you know, with any sort of tool, there's, there's the potential for a lot of greatness and a lot of uh, downsides as well.